Okay, so uh, I think we can start now. <coughs> um, so this session should cover uh, advanced K2 uh, usage, uh, tips and tricks, and more stuff that are uh, mainly important to professionals. Um, so we'll see some of the, the good things and the, the insights of K2. Um, we'll show you some tips and tricks on using uh, K2. And uh, at the end, we will have an open discussion with you, uh, obviously having used K2 already, to uh, see potential new features and other stuff that you would like to see as professionals in future releases. So let's start with uh, setting up uh, K2. First of all, I'd like to ask, has anyone created a website with K2? Is that, is that the case? Not everyone. Okay, have you at least uh, seen the demo or uh, is there someone that hasn't seen the demo or doesn't know what K2 is? Okay, you all know K2. So uh, let's see how we set up uh, a K2 website. What's important to understand is, basically we will cover a few uh, sections. And uh, what is important to understand is that uh, uh, there is a, a specific workflow when setting up K2 to make uh, the most out of its features. So I will be assuming that we have uh, installed our K2, our Joomla website. And uh, the first thing that we do is uh, go and install K2. And after that, we see the main K2 screen. So the, fir the uh, first most important thing that you have to do is uh, make sure that you have the right parameters set up. Um, uh, there are quite, quite a few parameters there, so it may, be, it may seem a little bit uh, confusing. Uh, but it's really uh, worth taking the effort and the time to see all these settings as they are global settings, define lots of things from uh, uh, styling elements uh, to advanced features like uh, improving performance in K2 and Joomla overall. Uh, so it's really important that you have a look at the configuration of the component once it's once installed um, so that you know wh what other um, stuff goes down goes uh, below uh, K2. Uh, these settings will be probably set once in your website and then it's, it's something that you completely forget. Everything else will be set on uh, primarily the content and the categories. So one important thing when we uh, open the, the configuration is uh, this switch that basically says if we're going to use K2's default CSS or not. Now, we've, we've uh, bundled K2 with some, um, uh, some generic CSS to make it look good even on the default template of Joomla when it's installed. And that is the Milky Way template. So there, there's some minimal, some minimal CSS to make K2 look good and have all the elements that it uh, includes be represented in a nice way. So if you're gonna use, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do advanced templating, then maybe it's a, it's a good idea to disable the CSS. Then we have options for uh, images. Uh, like I said uh, uh, the day before yesterday, um, it's very crucial if you know what type of sites you're doing, uh, you'll, you'll know what type of images you'll be uploading. So since K2 creates multiple uh, resized copies of the original image when it's uploaded. It, it's always uh, important to make sure that you have, that you're using the right default values. Of course, these values for images that get resized can be um, overridden in categories, but it's, because it's important is the, the reason that, that we've uh, added the image settings at the very top of this configuration. 
Now, as we move on, we see uh, other options controlling, again, mainly generic uh, aspects of the component. And, um, for example, how the search views, the date views, the tag view uh, look in our website. We can control here whether we're going to show the title of the article, the item, the text, the image, and so on. We also have uh, options for the commenting system and the RSS feeds. And as we go down to the more advanced thing, we will see, um, for example, stuff about front-end editing. People really uh, usually don't notice this. Um, by default, K2's front-end editing options are enabled. But um, if you don't want your users to see some of the tabs, in K2, in the K2 item form, then uh, you have the op these, these options here to actually hide these tabs. So if you're doing a website that is for, uh, primarily for articles, you can just show the content tab and the, the image tab, and that's it. What we've also done with K2 in the advanced settings uh, area is that uh, we've added some um, character replacements for the URLs. What this means is that, um, unlike Joomla, uh, if, you've, if you've used Joomla with a non-Latin uh, based language, you notice that uh, when you write the titles in the articles, the title alias, which is used on the URLs, uh, gets converted to numbers. Or it maintains uh, numbers and some Latin characters, if there are any, within the, the title of the article. In the case of Greek and other non-Latin based languages, that means that you get URLs that are basically uh, just a number. So in order to bypass this, we are overriding uh, the Joomla's default behavior when handling the title alias, and we are able to actually have URLs that are, um, uh, that are UTF, international URLs. So for Greek, for example, I don't know if uh, internet is back. Let's see. Oh. So anyway, for uh, for Greek, if if we're if we're having a website that's in Greek, the titles get converted to a, a Greek title alias. So that means the URLs are in Greek, and that means search engines like Google can scan the content a lot faster than if we were using the default Joomla behavior, which is IDs. This is something that's mostly useful for non-Latin languages. Uh, and uh, we've also added these replacements, which we got from uh, SH404 Ceph. Um, and uh, they are used to uh, convert other, other characters that um, <coughs> You can use this, this box here to do some replacements if you want for specific characters that will be difficult to be represented in the URLs. Yes? What happens if you're using a toolfish and you have more than one non-Latin uh, language? What K2 does is that it, makes, it always makes sure that the title used in any language will also be uh, converted as the title alias and therefore the URL of the item. What uh, Joomfish does is, um, yeah, I, I don't think, uh, no, Joomfish will not be able to, I don't think it will, it will be able to translate uh, the URL. So then you have to have here, uh, let's say, yeah, and also Just left left right. Right. Yeah. So it depends on the Joomfish XML components. If you choose to translate the alias, Yes, just now. There's, when, when translating K2 with Joomfish, yes, you have the option to also change the alliance. So in that case, it will just pick up any language. So if you're using uh, English and Swedish and what, whatever, the, the alliance will obviously change. But what remains the same is the ID of the article, of course, of the item. Now, in, um, in the latest version, uh, 2.3, which we plan to release in a few days. We would have released 2.3 
here at uh, JMB Yon, but unfortunately the lack of internet made it a bit difficult. Either way, um, we have added new stuff like um, the selection for uh, a better tagging system. We are giving more control over tagging for uh, administrators. We have also have uh, options for uh, Google search integration. And there are some performance settings, which is always nice to have a look. These performance settings make sure that, the, uh, that in case of websites with uh, thousands of articles, the back end is always fast and the front end is fast as well. So there are some tweaks that it's worth taking the effort and the time to uh, test if you plan to use K2 with uh, big websites. Finally, we have uh, um, two specific settings for SH404 Ceph, which is more or less the de facto Ceph component for Joomla. Um, these options allow you to uh, prefix uh, specific words for categories, for, for category pages, and for the user profiles. So that means you can have, um, uh, like we have here, uh, on all categories, you can have uh, domain.com slash item slash the name of the category, or it could be uh, categories. It's, it's, it's a simple way to uh, use SH404 Ceph and apply different, different naming um, uh, patterns for your URLs. So the next, um, the next important thing to keep in mind when installing K2 is um, basically the order of setting up things. You should, you should perhaps consider that this should be the start, but it's actually uh, the exact opposite, so to speak. Um, if we know our categories and the potential use of the website, uh, it's better to start building the extra field groups building the user groups that make up the ACL on the front end as well, then our categories, and finally uh, start doing our items. If you make, if you create, uh, if you um, make sure that the category tree that you have is uh, final and uh, you know what you want to do with K2, uh, then you can easily uh, set all these options basically once and forget them. Just for as a reminder, when we create extra field groups, we assign each group uh, to one specific uh, category. Um, it's, 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 more, it's more more appropriate to say that one each category can only be assigned to one extra field group. So we cannot have some category obviously uh, be assigned to multiple uh, extra fields groups. Of course we can have the same extra field group be assigned to multiple categories and this is what you would do in a, uh, a catalog situation where you have a list, a, a tree of uh, categories and subcategories and you want all these categories to inherit to be able to read the extra field groups that uh, are implemented in K2. One important thing, especially for those that are trying K2 for the first time, um, is all those that are you know, professionals that want to use K2, um, is the import functionalities we have. One is for uh, content here. This will bring up within K2 all the Joomla items, all the Joomla articles, the sections and the categories. Uh, the importing function will make the uh, Joomla sections as primary categories in K2 and all the categories are uh, created as subcategories to these primary categories. So you have your complete structure of sections and categories being imported within K2 to a nested level uh, system and then you can of course extend this. All the items maintain on, first, on the first import their IDs. So it's also easy for you to more or less um, create a plugin that will redirect all URLs to the new URLs. 
Another important function, function is uh, associated with the users. If you have a big website with uh, thousands of users being registered to download stuff or read stuff in your website, um, it's um, quite important if you, if you decide to use K2's ACL and user groups, it's a, it's a, it's a very good thing to be able to create some uh, groups, assign some features, uh, some uh, actions, and then go to users and import all the Joomla users. Now this, uh, this importing function will uh, um, uh, transfer all the, the Joomla users into K2 as well, basically extend uh, Joomla users with K2 features. So they're not, they're not, the, the Joomla users are not leaving the Joomla system, we are just extending them. Uh, we're adding uh, to them uh, more features. And um, once we do that, you will notice that once you migrate, you hit the import button, uh, K2 will, will create these groups, which are basically the default user groups in, uh, in Joomla. Let me show you. Okay, so as you see, we, we, we're adding this flag saying important from Joomla. It's uh, exactly the same groups. And then, for example, like I said, if you have a community with users that are just simple registered users, you can just edit this group here and assign different, uh, different tasks, different actions. So obviously, if you're migrating to K2 and uh, now you have commenting, you can allow these people uh, to post comments. Save, and now they'll be, they'll be able to comment within K2 items. What we've also done in version 2.3 is that uh, we have added some uh, cool features for basically managing the users, some features that are missing from the Joomla user manager as well. So for example, you can uh, disable multiple users which is something, if I recall, this, this is not possible with Joomla, let's see. Yes, as you can see, you cannot disable multiple users. So we've added all these handy uh, functions within K2 to be able to manage your users better from within K2. So if you want to migrate or move users from one group to the other, it's a lot easier to do this with K2, you can select, for example, two users and move them to a different Joomla user group and K2 user group. Like I said, these are handy th stuff that we've added to make administration even better. So once you set up K2 and import your, K2, your, users, your Joomla users into K2, you can forget about the um, Joomla user manager and do all sorts of administration activities related to users within K2. Now comments and uh, tags, of course, uh, well, comments, they don't uh, have any special uh, settings or whatever. This is just moderating them as well as the tags. Categories are what make up, of course, uh, with your website. They, they, they define basically the content of your website. Um, we've, uh, few, there are some things that you need to uh, make sure you notice with the categories and the items, you'll notice that we have, um, unlike Joomla, Joomla has the article trash as a menu, a different menu. Well, on the other hand, we use this uh, drop-down selector filter. So when you delete a category, it goes to the, let's show you. So we've deleted a category, you don't see it here, but if you want to see it and uh, revert it back, we've moved it to the trust. Now if you notice, these, the active categories 
they are all uh, blanked out, faded. While the trust one has a select box which you can use to permanently delete. Now, why we did this? We did this because when you delete categories within a nested level uh, category structure, uh, you have to be able to easily pinpoint if you do a mistake, uh, if some category belongs to some other. So it's, it's always best to see the actual uh, category tree. Some users, um, we've noticed that they sometimes they forget the filter and they go to the forum and post where are my categories, I cannot edit them. Well, when, uh, you know, the, uh, it's very simple that they've uh, forgot the filter. Next is the items. We've used similar, um, uh, a similar approach here as well. The trust state is here as well. What we've additionally added over managing articles within uh, Joomla uh, is uh, the fact that you can select multiple items and make them featured. This is a, uh, an option especially useful for uh, editors in chief. <coughs> we can filter, of course, by category and we can filter by uh, uh, featured state or not. Now, after we've set up K2, uh, like I said, after we, uh, we've uh, defined the parameters, the right parameters. Uh, we have to, um, if we plan to use K2 as a uh, media publishing uh, component and we want to have users in the front end managing content, we have to properly adjust the ACL as well. Now, the ACL of K2 is only for the front end. There's no option uh, to use the ACL in K2 for the back end, and that's because basically Joomla does not allow you to do this. So we've just created our own ACL for the front end, as this is the most important part for um, websites that have uh, dozens of uh, journalists and editors, and they want to maintain some level of control. Of course, in Joomla 1.6, when there's more, uh, there's a, a better ACL system for the backend as well. We will be able to adjust um, K2 and you, the uh, site owners, will be able to allow certain uh, people be able to see certain things within K2 in the backend. So, like I said, uh, the ACL is just for the front end, so we have to make sure that within those, the, the global parameters, this, this option here is set to yes. This will allow front end editing and basically um, open up the uh, uh, front end editing with ACL features in, uh, in our website. Now, what's the, what's the K2 ACL? We have defined some common actions um, for, uh, for handling the content. These actions are typical, basically, on all CMSs. Uh, we create a group and assign what users within this group are able to do. So these things uh, will mostly cover 90% of your needs. So uh, if users are able to post comments, we can select yes or no. Uh, we can select if they are allowed to input content from the front end. This will basically open up front end editing for any group. And furthermore, we can um, uh, obviously have more control whether these users that have access to front end editing can add their own items, edit their own items, or edit any item. And finally, if they're able to publish items. So if you adjust these groups, these uh, permissions properly, you can get as many uh, user groups in the front end as you want. 
managing uh, the appropriate content. So for example, plain authors who are able to contribute content, they would have front-end editing, yes, add items, yes, edit own items, yes. And all the, the others, you know, the last two said to no. If these authors were to manage content in one specific category, then we could select this specific category. And then these, these permissions will only, be, will only affect this category. Let me show you. So as you can see here, um, I have now logged in, and we have this, this is the mode K2 login uh, module, which is basically your, uh, your user's toolbar. So this, is, this, uh, this module ships by default with, uh, with K2, and as you can see, now that I've logged in, and I have the right permissions, I can see some specific stuff here. So being an administrator, I am able to add a new item from wherever I am, And as you can see, I have, have the ability to add content to any category. If I didn't have this, uh, if I was only able to, to manage content within a specific category, it would look like this. Let me show you. So I edit my own um, permissions, reload the page. As you can see now, this is an active category and it can be selected because it's the only category that I'm allowed to post content in. The other categories are blanked out and uh, we've left them like this because uh, again it's important for uh, editors that have specific rights to be able to understand where to put their content. They may be uh, allowed, for example, to input content in subcategories only on a second level under specific primary categories. So you want them to be able to see the whole tree <coughs> and uh, put the content on the appropriate uh, uh, categories. As you can see, of course, the, um, the editing page is more or less the same as with the backend. And like I said, all the tabs here can be deactivated if we need uh, further, um, uh, less, less control over content by our users. So, like I said, depending on the permissions that a user has, they will be able to see this option and this one. So imagine that you have a website with uh, people that contribute content and this content, these articles, these items, they have comments and um, people write comments to these articles. Instead of uh, uh, getting all the load of managing comments through the back end, you can allow your users to moderate comments to their own items. So if there are any comments, they can just use the front end to administer these uh, these comments. Let me show you. Now, if we wanted to build a small community of uh, users with uh, their blogs and so on, they would have to be able to easily navigate to their profile. So this is what uh, obviously the My Page uh, link does. It will uh, show you, get you to, the, to your page and you will be able to see your profile and all the associated items if there are any at the, at, at below. Let's log in with a different account.
So as you can see here, we see our page and we also see, if we're logged in, we can edit our items and uh, in version 2.3 we can even see the unpublished items. So as you can see here, this one, this is an unpublished item, that's why we see with a dashed uh, border. If we publish the article, then reload the page. As you can see, it's different now. It doesn't have the... So we've, we've added all these sorts of actions to make uh, front-end editing as easy as possible for users. And basically, uh, you can use K2 now to build a, a very basic uh, small community with uh, people that contribute content, have their own pages, have their profiles. Last thing is uh, the link to the My Account page. As you can see, we have the Joomla basic stuff, the K2 stuff, and uh, this is a K2 plugin running here. And finally, some more Joomla stuff. So the user is also able to fully manage their profile, their extended profile, through this module in a very simple way. Uh, of course, if you, if you did some advanced templating and um, some stuff that uh, would require your website to look, say, like a community, you could use this module as a toolbar and uh, change using MVC templating those links to make them look as you, uh, as you see fit. So it's easy to use this module all in all to um, uh, create an attractive layout uh, and close to a small community. Okay. Now, front-end editing, specifically in K2, like we said, um, there is, uh, the forms are basically ideal, uh, are, they are basically identical uh, to the back end. There are some elements that we, uh, that we chose to hide, uh, but they, these are elements that are basically, uh, should be allowed from the back end as well. So if there's, there's a, some user, some administrator that has access to all uh, K2's items, it's best to manage K2 through the back end. Now, front-end editing is very simple within K2. Um, if we have the right permissions, whenever we go to some category, you will see that there are, um, there are these links, like this one and this one. Uh, this, this is unfortunately, this is the demo site uh, on my local computer and it's not so updated to the utmost uh, 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 latest release of K2. So this one should be a little bit to the left. But as you can see, you're able to add a new item within this category, even if you don't have the module, the mod K2 login module uh, somewhere near for the user to see. And of course, if you have the right permissions, you can see a link to edit each item. and it will work as it does on any, on any occasion. The comments, like we said, as you can see, the list is almost identical to the back end, and there's also the option to filter uh, comments by category so that we make <coughs> Uh, managing the contents a little bit easier. And uh, it's also a, a simple way for editors-in-chief that only have front-end access to be able to see 
um, they obviously are able to, you know, moderate comments. Um, they, uh, they're obvious. No, for people. It's 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 only for people that uh, input their own items. Uh, it's a way to uh, just moderate their own comments. Uh, we also use the Ajax functionality to edit the comments. And of course, all the, all the other features of uh, managing and handling um, uh, comments. <coughs> now, templating. We used uh, two, two important uh, concepts within K2 for templating. Uh, one is uh, the sub-templating sub features. We have, um, as you know, we can have, uh, we can use K2 to build uh, all sorts of uh, content sections within a website. We can have our news, we can have our knowledge base, documentation, uh, anything that you can imagine, a video section, whatever. And uh, if our website is able to handle different types of content, different actual types of content, then it should be able to handle these different types of content uh, visually different. So that means we can use uh, K2 to actually create different sub-templates for different categories. So you have different categories looking uh, completely different because they should. The other concept, on-the-fly MVC templating, as we call it, is uh, basically a way to uh, complement sub-templating. Um, uh, you're able to create new views for, uh, your, for your K2 website. You can create new designs for your categories and have all these designs within folders, but inside your Joomla template. So you don't have to create these new sub-templates within K2 itself. K2 should always remain clear, and you can use um, uh, K2 sub-templating uh, techniques within your Joomla site, with, sorry, within your Joomla template, um, uh, to, and be, of course, completely independent of K2. Let's see what this is. So in the back end, if I edit a category, as you can see here, there's this option to use a sub-template within K2. So if I had a website that has uh, news, uh, videos, and uh, blogs, I could create three different uh, sub-templates, and they would show up here. And then when I create uh, one category, I could select, so if it's, if it's for blogs, I could select the, the blogging sub-template. Let me show you how sub-templates are structured. As you can see, this is the, the root of Joomla and the components. This is the, the front end part of K2. And unlike Joomla templating, normal Joomla templating, let me show you. How do we do Control. No, how much is Mark Okay, okay. Okay, how many numbers are Okay, as you can see, a classic uh, Joomla MVC component would just would have everything within the views. But what we've done is we've uh, created a simple folder called templates, which you can just copy as it is, copy templates, and move it within your Joomla template. That means move it within templates, my Joomla template, uh, slash HTML, slash comk2. So comk2 would include these, this folder and these files inside. And 
by just doing this simple copy paste procedure, you can start uh, skinning uh, K2 directly without you know, going inside its view like this. Okay, this is, this is the classic way for Joomla. So we decided to, instead of having the designer go and pick up what template is appropriate for, to, in order to override, we decided it should be easier and have everything within a specific um, uh, template. Now, if we want to create a sub-template, we can simply do it like this. So I just copied the default folder. The default folder contains just the, the views that will be uh, changed um, through categories. As you can see, uh, these views contain the, uh, the category listings of items and the, the, item, the item page. So you can just copy this folder to a new one. And as you see, K2 will pick it up. Okay. Now, I said before, it's, uh, we use this on the fly MVC uh, templating technique. That means you could actually do this. You could copy this folder. Go inside your template, as you can see. We're inside our templates. Within the HTML folder, I can just copy the templates folder, rename it to comk2. If I go inside, again, I'll see the blog template, the blog folder. Now, as you can see previously, I copied the default folder to create a new style called blog. K2 picked it up in the back end. I will delete that view from within K2. And I will leave it just within my template structure. Okay. I think it's, it's easy to see. Now, on the fly MVC means that K2 will pick this up. Will it? K2 templates. Ah, no, no, no. Then I'm valid. Yes, like I said, this is not an updated. Let me show. It's uh, it just needs another another path. As you can see, it has picked up the folder. But what I did is that uh, is, um, this, this is now fixed in 2.3. Uh, what we did before 2.3 is we took templates and we, by accident, we had to uh, m m transfer it within our HTML slash comk2 folder. Uh, but now with 2.3, you can just copy templates within your HTML folder in your template and then simply rename it to comk2. So either way, as you can see, uh, it has picked up the new uh, design that we created for our categories. And that means essentially that we can completely manage our uh, HTML design and layouts where it's supposed to be within our templates. This is obviously what allows you to uh, maintain both K2 clear and uh, your sanity as well, because everything is placed in one uh, position within the template. 
Now the same applies <coughs> uh, for modules as well because believe it or not most of the times you'll, uh, you'll find yourself working with the modules. Most modern websites they, uh, they're usually built of small blocks on the front page and this is where using the, the K2 modules uh, comes. Uh, for example the Gazeta website I think, yes. The Casera website is completely based on uh, mod K2 content, the front, the front page. So this is mod K2 content styled differently with some JavaScript to make it look like a slideshow. Mod K2 content copies within tabs. The editorial, of course. See, this is just retrieving one item with a title. The bloggers here, we, we retrieve the users. This is a new module that's inside the um, uh, K2 version 2.3. It's called Mode K2 Users. You can retrieve the latest, latest item from uh, users of specific groups, say the authors, or uh, specific users, selected authors. After in the component. Yes, in, in this case, we've also used the K2 component, but just for these four uh, articles here. Uh, and uh, four and four. So these are, these are basically, if, if you know K2 uh, category terminology, <clears throat> these are four leading and then uh, four uh, primary and four secondary. Ha do we have more? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Chris is obviously knows, knows Gazeta better than I do. But all that, all the blocks that you see with content, those blocks, everything is mod K2 content. Yes, this is, so is the images. This is again mod K2 content, filtering to show just the images and the title. And we use the small image and the big image as well to create a, this thing. Okay, so you can do all sorts of magic things with mod K2 content. Yes. This, of course, is the mod K2 comments uh, module, which retrieves the latest comments through the website. Now, like I said, mod K2 content, which is obviously the most important module for any K2 website, is able to uh, be templated using this on-the-fly technique, on-the-fly MVC technique. <coughs> Let's see. So as you can see, there's the same thing here. And what we have to do is uh, we just have to create likewise Hello. Uh, the 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 yes. See, I just added a folder, and if I make sure, I just use the files that are within. Let me show you. So as you can see, this is the, uh, the module structure, the structure, the fast structure of the mod K2 content. We have the TMPL folder, like on most uh, Joomla modules. And in there, we have 
these uh, other folders containing the templating files for this module. So if I just copy this folder within my templates, HTML mod K2 content folder, and rename it to something different, Yes, yes. So, just add the, the copy paste the folder here, change its name, change the files, do whatever you want. So Gazetta, for example, it has like 10, 10 different overrides. One is for the gallery, one is for the um, articles that are displayed, uh, you know, like title, text, image, and another maybe just for titles, and so on. So this, uh, this concept is also available, if I recall, on Mod K2 users as well. Yes, because Mod K2 content and Mod K2 users are the two modules that you will be most likely to skin differently. The other modules, the login one and the comments one, since they retrieve content uh, in a generic way, or you know, they do gen generic stuff, they, there will be no need, more or less, to have them styled differently. In other words, you won't be, there will be no need to have a calendar block coming from Mod K2 tools styled differently on uh, different pages. If you want to do that, you can just use CSS to override. Now, we're getting into more, uh, a little bit more uh, advanced stuff. The K2 plugin API. Um, let's see. Now, what we've done with the K2 plugin API is that we've uh, basically allowed for plugin events to be executed in the back end and the front end as well. We, we are, of course, using all uh, front end uh, plugin events as used by Joomla and uh, ComContent. And uh, we have added some additional ones because uh, the content for K2 is a lot richer. So to be more specific, we have used new events that can be applied in basically uh, three views. The, uh, the category view, this is a category view. We can have events running there, as with Joomla, of course. We have the, the item view, where we can execute plugin events there, like on prepare content, where most, K2 plug, most uh, Joomla plugins execute. And then we have the users uh, page. So essentially three views that we can execute um, uh, these uh, K2 plugin events. Now, as you can see, uh, we created a plugin, a simple plugin, which we've also released uh, in public. The plugin is called uh, User Extended Fields for K2. And what this plugin does is that it can hook up additional details about this user below their profile. And uh, these details can also be uh, shown in the item page at the bottom, if you use the default K2 styling, at the, almost at the bottom of the text, uh, you will see a block of the author with basic details. So you can have this plugin running on their page and on each item at the bottom of the content where the block, the user block is. So obviously this is a plugin being executed on a custom uh, plugin event. It's worth uh, taking the time to download this plugin that you can find on the community and on the JET as well. 
Um, and you will be able to see how the API works and how uh, and you, you'll be able to see these extra uh, plugin events that we use to fire and uh, append content into these specific views. Now, K2, like I said, is extensible in the backend as well. So these plugin events have uh, their, um, uh, their, their related backend uh, plugin events as well. So to be more specific, this plugin. Let me show you. This plugin is, uh, this K2 plugin basically installs as any Joomla plugin. It has its own uh, uh, group called K2 within the plugins folder inside uh, Joomla. And uh, as you can see, there are just two switches, but no fields for the stuff that you saw on the user profile here. This is natural because all the, the content that's supposed to, con to, that this plugin is supposed to display should go to the user administration here. So if you open up your profile, you will see that the plugin uses the right plugin event on, in the backend to render these fields within the profile. So we have such plugin events for uh, the user, uh, front end and back end. We also have plugin events for uh, the item and for the category as well. So you'll see we have this plugin, which we will also release uh, sometime soon. It's called Related Items. And what this plugin does is it gets appended below the, the, the content tab here. It gets appended here. We can control on which tab the plugin will show. As you can see, if I switch on the image tag, it's gone. So this is just a way to create plugins that are specific to a certain task within K2. So obviously, selecting related content here should go in this place. Okay. Hello. See? If it was, uh, say, uh, a plugin that fetches um, a video from some specific provider, we could create it and call it on a different event that can work here. So more or less, we have, we have, we have a, an example plugin on the community site of uh, K2 where you can download it and see the events documented, those, those plugin events for the backend and for the frontend as well. Uh, so you can easily create K2 plugins with existing knowledge on creating Joomla plugins and you can uh, basically extend the, the item, the category, and the user forms in the back end and in the front end uh, in, in ways that, well, at least for the item, uh, it may be limiting to do with uh, the extra fields. The extra fields are limited to specific tasks like uh, text boxes, drop downs, links. So if you want to do more, if you want to say add a uh, Google map, you can create a plugin. Append, it, append its backend forms, backend input at the content tab, say, and then have this also displayed in the front as well. So, after this is
Toch maar wel. Ba. Ja, we uh, this this is obviously not finished. Hello? Probably not. The plugin is like I said is under development so it's it doesn't render. But I, I guess you get the idea of what you can do. The same way that you uh, if you if you download the user extended fields for K2 plugin, you will see how we attach uh, the fields um, in the back end. This is done within the XML file of the plugin and how we render these fields on the front end as well. It's it's existing Joomla plugin knowledge, more or less. Sorry, can you repeat once more? I, I didn't hear you. Yes, we have we have the default uh, Joomla events, and these events obviously fire up uh, if you create a content plugin. Of course, our system plugins uh, work, and we have added some additional K2 events that they use uh, Joomla's naming techniques. So uh, we have on prepare content that fires where the uh, output of the text uh, is. And we also have on K2 prepare content. So wherever we have on something in Joomla, it will be on K2 something for K2. So we have basically on the item page, like uh, more than 10 events. And basically you can control where you can position your plugin uh, in, uh, in, many, in many places. And of course you can move these events in your website, if you wish to create a plugin that fires in a specific event and in a specific position, so the, 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 there's there's no limitation in uh, in uh, how you can use plugins and execute them on the front end. On the back end, of course, it's uh, obviously uh, limited, meaning that if you create a, a K2 user plugin it will obviously append those fields in a specific position in the backend forms. Like I showed you, will run. That's, that's, just, uh, that's just it. So, um, that's more or less the K2 advanced features. So, if you now want to ask anything or suggest stuff, we're, we're here to answer, yes. So you mean uh, when you create, you put your Facebook like button, it's not like a component of your, but it's not like a super blogger extension of your K2. So because I, in Germany, uh, our more users use Facebook than uh, Twitter. That's maybe under the retweet button, uh, maybe a Facebook like me. Well, it's, uh, there are many ways to do this. You can either create a K2 plugin, which is like a Joomla plugin. You just have more events to fire this on the, on the front end. Or you can just append the Facebook-like uh, code in uh, just your template, your MVC template. It's not a big deal. I mean, it's, it's quite easy. Yes, but uh, I mean, as, as these services progress, we will, of course, uh, change the features that are, are default, that ship by default with K2. So, you know, all these features here, they will not look th this way as we progress. As new services are added, we will make sure always that, you know, we will update them. And, uh, you know, we don't just have the Facebook link, but we have the like button. Yes. Um, using the menu selection for category, you see multiple categories on a menu link, which will then split up the category view. Mm -hmm. um, the problem there is you can't get a category description of this multiple category, category view. Would that be something you look at, or would you just work around and find the templates in the library? It depends. If you select multiple categories, what category description will show? Well, it would be a custom description. 
Uh, yeah, so in that case, you could, uh, yeah, we just have to add a small box on, uh, you know, the menu item. Yeah. So. Is this something I can count as well? No, no, it's, it's, uh, it's nice, it's nice. I mean, so here, where we have these uh, options, if we select multiple categories and these options get uh, uh, enabled, we could have a small box um, that you can use to append some text before the, the category content renders. Okay, that was one. The other thing mm -hmm. is also assigning um, an item to, to multiple categories. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Now, um, there, are the, there are some things here to take into consideration. Uh, you've, you've used, for example, Virtual Mart, and you know that you can have one item into multiple categories. But uh, if you think about categorization properly, you will realize that um, categories are like uh, folders, which, like physical folders, can be organized in physical drawers. So you can never have one folder belonging to two drawers. Okay, so uh, if, you see, if you see things like that, you can create a clear category structure in your website. And if you wanna interlink items to multiple, say, pseudo categories, you use tagging for that. That's, that's the tagging concept. Now there are, of course, um, we could of course enable uh, K2 uh, multi-mapping. So you could have items in multiple categories, but then this makes things a little bit trickier on the front end because you have to be able to um, uh, determine the primary or the, the, the categories for each item when you render stuff. So it gets a little bit confused, and it's one of the reasons why uh, multi-mapping was not added in Joomla 1.6 as well. It's also, uh, I think, a performance issue. Uh, URLs can get... Uh, Your, URLs may be some set for problems. Yes. Yeah, don't, don't forget, sorry, to, just to compliment this, don't forget that when you click an item in K2, this item will display all the elements that make up the item are defined within the category. So if this item belongs to two categories, how do you know, you know which category is to uh, be the one that says print these elements? Yes, that, that's, the, that's the idea. That's why you, we added all the parameters within the category so that when you jump from one category to the other, you don't have the item ID thing. And you're, you always know that uh, uh, your content will display properly. Unlike, unlike Joomla, you know, if you create a menu item in Joomla, and especially in 1.6, um, and you jump from one item to another by clicking, say, the selected category, the, you're viewing an item and you see a link. Let's visualize this. You see this link, okay? And you click the link for this category. Now, when you navigate away to this category, uh, Joomla will maintain the item ID of this page. And then if you go through that category to another page, which may have a different item ID, uh, this will obviously not render. And if we used how Joomla does content organization, you know, you'd, things will be, would be messed up. So we had to obviously rethink how we should control all these parameters. And I think it's how, um, no, I don't think, I'm, I'm uh, certain that it's how Drupal does it and uh, probably WordPress in the future. Uh, 
uh, what we could do is uh, obviously be able to assign one uh, an extra field to more than one extra field groups. So in that case, yes. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that, that no, no, you're right, you're right. Uh, and uh, th th this is something that we can change because now that we have uh, basically integrated the entire Tienda component within K2, this is in a plugin that will render within the items, below its item. So uh, in such cases, it's clear that, um, yes, we have to provide uh, uh, more flexibility into the workflow of K2 content. Um, and uh, like you said, allow extra fields to be assigned to multiple categories. Uh, by the way, the, the Tienda plugin that I mentioned, the, the K2 plugin for Tienda, will basically bring most of the Tienda functionality within such a block. And uh, you can use K2 as the catalog. And likewise, of course, you, you have to be flexible with extra fields. So you can use K2 as the catalog. And when you click on buy buttons that this will generate, you just swap, uh, switch over to Tienda. And we are also fixing this for, uh, we're also developing this plugin for virtual models as well. So yes, there are workflow issues that we can fix and uh, make it even more, uh, uh, you know, um, flexible. Seamless, just. Nothing, just uh, install on top and it will just pick up all the new things. Which, uh, like I said, we, we make sure we uh, improve the workflow, but uh, we don't change the database. So the only thing I think that we did from 2.1 to 2.2 is add indexes to the database. So that, uh, the, to the database tables of K2, so that it's more efficient in performance. Uh, but Within the version two range, there will be no uh, database changes, or if, they, if there are any, there will be minimal and adding new stuff, not messing with existing stuff. It's always on our mind, you know, how to make uh, this uh, content management component be able to add new functionality on all our projects as well. So in order to do this as painless as possible, you have to, you know, to take some, uh, uh, we have just designed K2 in such a way that we will not be needing to do this for the next couple of years. So when we reach version 3, and we're also considering to add multi-mapping, but we just need to figure out those, uh, uh, you know, those issues that we mentioned earlier. Um, again, the changes may be minimal in the database, but all these changes are passed on the installation. So overall, the upgrading of K2 will always be uh, an easy situation. And of course, things that we will add in version 2.4, like content versioning, and uh, an import-export functionality of content is basically stuff that uh, are preparing the ground for migrating to Joomla 1.6. So trust me, it, it will be a lot easier to move your Joomla 1.5 K2 site to Joomla 1.6 than using just Joomla 1.5 to Joomla 1.6. Excellent. 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 Excellent.